far, how far west? Mm. We, are we streaming? Please? Yes, we are. All right. So it, it is, is 9 a.m. All right. Good morning, everyone. I am going to call the meeting of the Cunnington County Board of Commissioners to order. It is Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I believe it's Troy's turn today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I will still mention if there are some individuals, we are open now for um, if they want to come to our meetings, but if they still choose, they can call in on 882-6248 and 882-6297. Um, if there's any public comment, and we would address that during the open for items that are not on the agenda, no action can be taken. Now that we're here, I'll just remind everyone so we don't keep getting donuts. If you'd want to silence your phones during the meeting, that would be wonderful. JT. <laughs> um, item number three, conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest on any items on the agenda for the commissioners? Nope. No. No. All right. Item number four, action to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Got a motion by Van Dusen, second by Gable. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries. Item number five, action to approve the minutes of the so June moved. 16th, 2020 meeting. Second. That's all right. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries. Item number six, um, we'll start with emergency management, monthly reports. And Jamie. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning, Jamie. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. I can turn that one on too, and then you got them both on. There you go. They're on stereo. Yeah. Nah. All right, well, this month has been kind of active again. Uh, let's continue to follow the COVID response with our local task force, which includes not only uh, our unified command, um, our county partners and our state partners with the state coordinator, um, Randy out of Aberdeen office. Um, but what we've done there is now kind of slowly backed off to bi-weekly meetings where now we're only meeting uh, typically on Mondays with our unified command task force. And then the full task force meeting with everybody happens every other Thursday. Um, looking at current numbers as of yesterday, Coddington County was uh, actively with 40, nine positive cases with 43 are recovered. So that's kind of good signs at the current moment. Uh, the state's still showing 808 active and 88 hospitalized along with 81 deaths, which is kind of disappointing, but it's the risk of the business we're in. Um, 
they also are showing 4% that are hospitalized um, in the state, along with 6% that are on uh, ventilators throughout the state. Um, also yesterday, um, kind of preliminary announcement for our office thus far, but the governor's office released the local government COVID recovery fund, which allocates 200 million to the city and county governments from that federal allocation of the 1.25 billion that was uh, released for federal allocation. That's gonna allow reimbursement for only allowable expenditures related to public health emergency, which will include costs that will be from a period of March 1st and ends December 30th of 2020. Um, looks like we've been allocated uh, $1.850 million, uh, very preliminary list of all the counties and cities uh, on that list throughout the state. Um, like I said, it's kind of preliminary. There's a lot of uh, unanswered questions, but the state is contracted with six planning districts uh, that'll serve the state, or the whole state for guidance and assistance, which will be our point of contact. I have not met that individual yet, but I'm sure we'll be hearing from him soon. Um, been very active as far as weather in the beginning couple weeks of June there. We had storms that produced uh, a lot of straight line winds on that June 4th storm that kind of was from the northern half all the way to the southern half of the county with uh, straight line winds of 80 to 90 miles an hour. Now, lots of tree damage, of course. You guys have been hearing nothing more but Memorial Parks issues mm -hmm. and the cleanup there. But all the way uh, to the north, to the south, we did have a, a resident that called in which I followed up with the National Weather Service down on kind of the county line in the southwest corner of the county on 177th. He received straight line winds, but uh, the National Weather Service determined that to be what they call eddies. Mm -hmm. And when the straight line winds hit that large shelter belt that he has in kind of an L shape, it created those swirling effects. He actually thought he had a, a twister, but I, I put him back in touch with the National Weather Service to get clarification and what they did, but it actually uh, pushed his garage off the foundation a little bit and a lot of uh, outbuilding damage, which uh, I reported to National Weather Service with lots of pictures. And, okay. and, what the, and that's what that was determined to be. Was where, straight line. where was that at? <clears throat> um, down on uh, 449 and 177th, kind of in that Grover, only about a mile in from Hamlin County from the south there. And visiting with the uh, Hamlin County, they had a lot of the same thing. We noticed um, one section of irrigation was tipped over out there by the state parks out of Pelican. Can I mention the name sure. or not? It's Lance and Vicki Beebe's oh, residence. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I know where that's at. Okay. And then uh, typical again on the, about a week later, actually four days later <laughs> with all the wind and excessive heat and a lot of the typical more storm, the straight line winds, didn't get a lot of reports there. But then on Monday, June 15th, when we got to work there, we were called out to Kranzburg for quite a bit of tree damage. And what that ended up being, according to uh, National Weather Service, was reported as heat burst, which I found odd, but I'm not a meteorologist, so that's how they determined what, uh, what they gave for a report on that. Um, the looking first, at the, the first one was what? At BB's, what they call that? Eddie's? Eddie's. Eddies. It's a swirling effect that when the, how it was explained to me is when it hits the tops of the trees, it creates that vacuum downflow, but a twist type effect. Hmm. But still, yeah, I learned lots from the National Weather Service. Yeah. Today. We got two new terminologies. Now. Right. Uh, followed up on the 15th of Kranzberg. Uh, I think uh, Rick and the county uh, helped up on the cleanup on that. Um, visited with the local contact there who hired a contractor and I think the relatively got Cranswood cleaned up really fast. Yep. I think Modak Dairy actually is the ones who, is that who did mm -hmm. it? helped them. Yep. Um, been also active, the Cotton County Search and Rescue Team has been used a couple of different EMS responses this month as well. Um, one for a report of a jet skier what was in trouble which turned out to be in the good mm -hmm. off of Memorial Park. Uh, we had a request for a mutual aid assistance out of Minnesota over in Murray County on a recovery mission, um, which also turned out to be just that and a very uh, short lived event for the team as well. But they've also been providing about 10 weeks of logistics for the food drive at the high school. So that team's been very active as far as about <coughs> half a dozen different members, including myself a couple of times on transporting the food from the coolers and helping a lot with the safety of the uh, foot traffic and the directional traffic with the with the local PD. 
Um, they've also kind of returned now. Uh, weekly training is also back resumed, uh, resumed again with uh, the search and rescue team and continue their raffle drive. Um, we also had a quarterly pod meeting with Joanne Paulson, which uh, gave us quite a few updates and a lot of new, nothing new, I guess, just a refresher on what's gonna happen. And they've set an exercise date for the pod program of October 26th of this year, which will be at the Extension Center as usual. Um, I also updated our local 911 dispatch center with some current uh, rosters and some new weather procedures. And what stemmed out of that, um, it, it was kind of dated. Um, they needed some new, new rosters along with points of contacts, along with uh, procedures on how we open up storm shelters. We had a few calls at the office um, locally and from the PD on uh, people asking. So we refreshed on that a little bit. And what I did there is released a quick little PSA on uh, just the locations with the extension center, the Anza soccer complex, and um, oh, where did I go with that? <laughs> Reading my notes. <laughs> anyway, we updated the, the, the 911 <laughs> center. <laughs> Lost my train there. Um, also, I'm going to be attending uh, some state training locally that will be happening here in Watertown now that the state is kind of relaxing, mm -hmm. uh, getting back to some training will virtually end. This one will be. Uh, actually at uh, our local FD on um, July 21st and 22nd for some mass fatality training. Hopefully getting the realm back and kind of the new normal. Mm -hmm. So Jamie, we have the three storm centers, uh, shelters. We have Anza, we have the extension building and we have the one out at City Park. Is Correct, that right? City Park, that's what I was missing. Just so people are Nine aware of that. Lake, so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And everything looks up to snuff again there. So where's the one at City Park? Where's that? Over in that southwest corner of the campground, kind of up on the hillside. Brown Do you recall the old blue stand? Yeah. On the curb, mm -hmm. right behind that former. Oh, there is a. Yep. Is that a dugout? No, it's actually built storm center, just like oh. the Anza mm -hmm. soccer so complex. Built now with we've project had impact funds at one point. Isn't there yep. one at Memorial I was going to say Park? Memorial Park. Isn't also that like the one. bathroom that was or whatever? I'd have to get with, with Steve. The is that actual? I think. I think it ready? is. I, I think so. it, I'm pretty sure yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. marked. It's marked with, yes. I think yeah. there's a project impact sign yeah. on it. I believe so. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. too. Yeah. There is. For, the yep. for the campers that are yep. out there. Now we've got. I assume we'll use that at, center one. At Memorial mm -hmm. Park and then also at the Extension Center. That's new personnel there. So, you know, I just. That was you. part of the updating on the 911 <clears> okay. dispatch, getting them yeah. their good numbers. and. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's like four contacts out there yep. that I listed mm -hmm. Good. with them, yep. along with Steve mm -hmm. on that list as well. Yep. I can't get through to anybody. Yep. So. Just, um, Matt, Jared, just yes. a question on the, the CARES Act stuff. So I saw on the web, I saw the website, what's the governor's thing and it's on the list mm -hmm. of cities and counties and stuff. But um, are they working everything through the auditors? Do you know, is that kind of the plan? Kind of the way they, it reads, and I don't know if Cindy's heard anything. Or yeah, heard, okay. I mean, we're the ones getting the emails, but um, they are. I, I suppose they contacted us because we're the point of receiving the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Once okay. it's applied for, but they do want a contact person. There is a resolution that we have to approve down the road. Yeah, I and saw that. it'll okay. list our contact person, and I, I don't know. Most of the time, our contact person is the emergency management office, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that have all the data on the PPE. So mm -hmm. to me, they would be the logical um, yeah, okay. people. So I don't have to do it. Okay. Congratulations, <laughs> okay. Jamie. All right, I there, just yeah, saw. I just have seen different things. And there'll be a, a county resolution, um, a reimbursement agreement, and a risk assessment questionnaire. Is how this reads. Thus yeah, far. I, I saw that. If yeah. you caught on any of that or not. Yeah. Um, I'll be reaching out today to okay. see if we can get through to first so, district. Cause we don't meet again now till the first week. I say we have a two week. July 7th. Yeah. So, but it's a grant portal the way it looks and what expenditures are. We might want to get that. And what's not. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably get that on the agenda for the 7th so that <laughs> that's, we can approve that's that the question. Um, they do have forms on that website. I don't know if There's a couple website. of conflicting areas there. Right. I mean, at one point it says we can deduct um, or we can claim law enforcement salaries. Mm -hmm. But in another spot, it says it makes it sound like if it's something that's already been budgeted for, 
that we can't. So that we need to talk to first district to get a mm -hmm. clarification on Maybe that. Maybe the over and above cost. on that language. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Well, I do okay. have. I asked that question, and then I'm sitting here thinking about some of the things. You know, I said we have some new personnel on some of these. We also have some new uh, policies out at the extension center. We don't allow anything but service dogs in the facilities out there. What are you gonna do with storm shelters? So you got that figured out? I know there's some couples that just don't leave their spouse home and take the dog with them, you know? <laughs> you we know? used to have it that they could bring a kennel and they're kept in the barn area, I there thought. There are some kennels up in, and I think that's how that lays out. Uh -huh. Visiting with the former EM is set up those there, three, four, maybe a half yeah. a dozen kennels up there mm -hmm. that we could stage in that barn area. Mm -hmm. Yep. If need be, mm -hmm. but Far I don't know on the service side. Yeah, you know, take them with into the the shelter of yeah. the two bathrooms and the entryway there. Mm -hmm. You're on top of it. Something Sounds to, like something to visit with with the, the maintenance crew. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> um, the storm shelter out at Memorial Park was finished in July of 2002. Great construction was the engineer on it and. It came at a price tag of $52,946. Does it say the capacity? Uh, not on the information that I'm looking at right now, no. I would say probably 60. Last time I was in that. It's not very big. No. Oh. <clears throat> 60 to 80, I think, is about where the, or 80 to 100 is about what the city park one. But I know there's a lot of uh, federal guidelines on building those and I think they've gotten mm -hmm. quite expensive. So it looks yeah, like, like the yeah, Anza sure. one, that one's not yeah, overly big either. I wanna say that was 200 and something. Oh, it is? Thousand. Wow. It, oh, no, no, big. I mean capacity-wise. Uh, Money-wise, yeah. expense-wise, it's, yes. it's a big cost just it for was. the 250 mile an hour wind yep. that it has to protect. Madam Chair, while Jamie's here, do we wanna talk yes. about number seven? Yep, planned on doing that while you're here. Um, What's your idea on discussion, possible action to enact by resolution the county's ban on open burning? Where are you at on that? Currently, I haven't read the whole thing. Uh, Cindy sent me uh, the updates of the last one. Was that 2016? I believe it was revisited. <laughs> it's been a while. Looks not a whole lot has changed on it. I think we've added some verbiage in between here and there on some points. But I actually pulled up the, uh, the, the OEM office, puts out the weekly climate weather the fuels update once a week. Um, with the wildland fire SDXU extension and the school of mines right now, their potential for critical conditions says no critical fire weather conditions are expected this week. Now that's coming out of, uh, Darren Clabo, I believe is his name out there. Um, the Western side of the state didn't receive nearly as much, but we ended up with on an average, according to the national weather service, uh, three and a half to four inches in areas in our County. Um, I did reach out to the county fire departments, um, got a response from the Wallace Fire Department. He didn't see a need, but I did not hear from the other three. So, and after we got the rain with the storms, I kind of just let it go for right now. But that's and they're talking more rain this Friday. Possibly or, Thursday yeah. night, I think again. Yeah, so. And, but we were an average, uh, how was that? Uh, two to nine degrees hotter in the first couple of weeks of June along with that wind. Mm -hmm. Now we should go with set different. some records, yeah. Felt like July a, week. a week ago it changed everything and we had what inch and 40 hundreds I yeah. believe out of that yeah. last storm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so your recommendation is we were, it's probably not needed at I this I don't think point. it's needed at, at this time, honestly. Um, that's mine um, take on it and I'll keep reaching out to the other three fire departments as well. Is that something Maybe we should leave on the agenda? Yeah, we you might want that. to. Yeah. Yeah. At least through the anything. fourth. Yeah. Well, it's, well, if something it's changes, we don't need we'll continue next to week. monitor that the state's actually been back to keep putting this back out once a week. Right. So if something changes, though, we could call an emergency meeting, right, Cindy, and address that or not? You'd have to talk to Becky on that. I'm, I'm, I'm not what I'm not sure what constitutes an emergency, an emergency I guess. Resolution. Yeah. But <laughs> I think in the past, we've just put it on the agenda and, and well, yeah. something yeah. we addressed on a week. Yeah, week. we'll leave it on there. Out. We're just saying we don't need <clears throat> next week. So if the weather conditions changes or whatever, it's the only thing. So. We'll figure that out. Okay. But as of now, then I guess as of right now, anyone I'd... have an appetite then to enact that or leave it yeah. off. Thanks, Jamie. Keep Thank up you. the good work. Appreciate Thanks, the communication Jamie. with you. That's great. All right.
Then we will move on. I guess I forgot to mention that our sheriff is uh, via um, Zoom this morning. Good morning, Brad. Good morning, everybody. I'll we'll let you do your report. And Lee, I think, can pull it up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, Lee should have her. Which page do you want first, Brad? We're going to start with the balance sheet here. Okay. Let me find it. Where have it <clears throat> it's on the, no, it's on the screen, so. All right. For the month of May, our monthly balance sheet, uh, the end of May bank balance was $6,795.15. Um, you can see we collected $16 in copy fees. Sheriff fees, we collected $5,964.65. And we collected $225 in warrant fees for a grand total of $6,205.65. If we jump to the charts and graphs page there, we'll start going over some of the numbers that we have here for the office. Uh, for the month, uh, we'll actually throw April and May in here. You'll see the last two columns there. Uh, for cases and calls. Well, that one's on. There you go. Okay. I'll give you All a second right. to get her pulled up. Yeah, there we go. No, hold on a second. Yes, I'm on the... Give me a second here. Sorry. What did I do wrong? <clears throat> Apologize. All right, begin. There we go. Scroll. There we go. Even better. Scroll down just a little bit and we'll be able to see there. Um, the Sheriff's Office responded in April to 583 cases and calls, and in May it was 766 cases and calls. You can see our numbers throughout the year. We're starting to get a little bit busier. Um, Mays, we can kind of attribute to some of the wind tower traffic. We're getting a lot busier on the east side of the county with all the wind tower projects that are going on. Um, I expect that to be busy throughout the rest of the year here with, with uh, traffic complaints and um, traffic issues up there. <clears throat> Three accidents uh, reports that were completed in April and in May there was 11. Uh, warrant served, there was 30 in April and 52 in May. And those are down a little bit because of COVID. We haven't been traveling very far to pick up people uh, on warrants due to the COVID. And you'll see that with our transport miles when you jump down a couple columns too. Uh, there's only 2,580 miles in May and 3,100, 3,182, I should say, in April. Um, and then civil papers served 172 in April and 133 in May. Scroll down and we'll go over some of the jail activity here. Our average daily population from April was 31.63, and in May it was 31.45. You can see those are considerably down to, uh, due to COVID as well. The courts are just slowly starting to get back up and going and starting doing some sentencings, and uh, they're still holding off on some trials or whatnot right now. Uh, just looking at the list this morning, we were about 46 inmates. So that number is kind of slowly creeping up from April and May's numbers. Our high average daily population was 37 in April, 39 in May. Our low ADP was 26 in April, 27 in May. On our scram bracelet, part of the 24 seven program, we had in April, 22 people, 22 uh, participants and one in May. And if you look ahead to twice weekly PBTs, um, looks like 51. I think some of that's still residual from March there. And then zero in May, we haven't been doing PBTs. Twice weekly UAs at 57 in April and 27 in May. Those numbers are starting to climb back in. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. On the sweat patch, uh, zero people in April and four people in May. Uh, bookings, they're down in April to 105 and then back up again here in May at 176, which is a little bit lower than average as well if you look throughout the rest of the, the year there. If you scroll on down to the bottom there, you'll see the out-of-county contracts. Um, in April, we collected $4,735 in out-of-county contracts. May was $6,075. Work relief Work release fees were $0 in April, $0 in May. 24-7 uh, fees, $513 in April, 
$543 in May. And scram fees, $252 and $168 in May. So you'll see that those 24 seven numbers are down considerably because of the program was suspended there for a couple months. Um, two, three weeks ago, we did start that program back up again. And we are not doing PBTs at this time, but we are doing UAs. We're slowly working <laughs> in, the, in phases to get this program up and going again. Uh, but we have been doing UAs to kind of get that process up and going. It seems to be working pretty good. Staff is wearing PPE, masks, um, sanitizing when people come and go. Same thing with participants. They're also wearing masks and PPE when they come and go. Um, looking at different options right now, different technology, scram bracelets. There's other 24 seven technology for PBTs that we're testing and looking at, you know, for options for the future here for the for the breath test. So, any questions on that before we jump on down to a couple other topics here? So, just if I could, uh, I'm sure. So, um, you and I had talked a little bit, Sheriff. Um, so, a lot of what's going on is we're not doing the the work release um, because you have people coming. In, you would have people coming in and out of the jail, which is kind of one of the issues with um, COVID, and then also. Um, the sentence population is almost, it's just very few right now because the, the court system is putting off the sentence, serving of sentences. Um, is that kind of an accurate way to say what's kind of causing most of the, you know, most of these really low numbers? Yeah, actually, like say, you can see on the work release, there was zero dollars brought in in April and in May. Uh, same thing with 24 uh, seven. We haven't had work release going since the middle of March uh, as due to the COVID we can't have someone leaving our facility and then possibly bringing COVID back into our confined space and to our facility. So yes, that's, that's an accurate statement. That new testing that you were talking about, Brad, is that something that, um, you know, other counties are in, within the state are looking at? Uh, what, what would that look like? Can you explain that at all or not really sure yet? So the yeah, it's actually, it's a remote breath test is what it is. Um, it's, Let's take like a current cell phone. It's got a little picture and a camera on there. Um, it'll actually take a picture of you as you PBT to identify that this is Brad. This is the right participant. It has facial recognition. It has all that software built in. So that's something that we're, we're testing. We actually have a machine here. Uh, the problem with that is, you know, I think it was $5 um, a day for, for testing. So that's something that we're looking at there. It's a couple, three, be $3 more a day than PBTs currently. So uh, looking at the expense, looking at how accurate, how it's working and um, doing a little bit of testing with that right now, that is something that the state is also, there's some other agencies throughout the state that are trying this as well. Okay. Thanks. All right. We don't have any other questions. We'll move on. You have several I items. Just, I just actually got a couple other things I wanted to touch base on here sure. quick too. Um, food service program that we um, talked about a few weeks ago now that we approved that actually is going to be starting this Thursday, the 25th. Um, they're working at still trying to find an employee to come in and, and work with that, work with Marcy. Uh, but that program, we've got our uh, freezers and we've got our storage space up to snuff. Everything is ready to go with that. So we're looking forward to that getting started. Um, some of the office have been training arms is underway for training for that. Uh, just been a busy, busy couple months. As you know, a couple weeks ago, there was a couple of protests on the courthouse grounds that we, you know, there's a lot of planning that took in place there. We handled that. There was no issues. Everything went, went very well. They were peaceful. Another little bit of good news. Um, the Council of Juvenile Services held their meeting last week and the Boys and Girls Club cooperation here with the county uh, for JDAI. We had that grant of around $74,000 for Brooke Reedburn's position. That was approved by the Council of Juvenile Services for another year's of service there. So we can continue our JDAI efforts on reducing our juvenile population. And coming up here, we've got a lot of planning going into Cransburg on the 4th of July. That's uh, that'd be the last topic that I have before we move on to the next thing, but it's been a busy couple months. 
Yes, it has been a lot of out of the ordinary sort of things that had to be addressed. That's for sure. Yep. All right. Does anyone else have any questions for? I, I would. Uh, I think Brad, uh, you should. I heard your radio. You were on the radio what yesterday or whatever, and now uh, a number that you said this in, in relationship to the food service, and. Um, the, it was saving the county a uh, number of dollars, and and I think the number was thirty thousand. Is that what you said in the neighborhood? Yeah, that is correct by our estimates. We actually reduced our budget, the jail budget, next year by thirty thousand dollars in savings for the the food service program. The numbers I guess, might come in a little higher. Go ahead. My question in regards to that is is how how are we able to do that? Because we're going to keep Marcy on. And then we're going to also add another one and a half FTEs, correct? Yep. The uh, so food that'll go from one to actually two and a half FTEs, and yet we're going to save thirty thousand dollars. Are we going to start star starving our our uh, inmates, or are we going to make up that difference? No, each, that's a good question. Each inmate they're still going to get twenty eight hundred calories. Uh, like I say, this food service program, they're actually going to do more things by scratch. Um, they're going to be building or not building, but baking, and there's going to be a lot more food done by scratch. So that's going to save considerably on that part. Um, the county is not actually going to add 1.5 employees. The food service program is going to hire them on, and they're going to be part of the food service program. Um, sure. And that's the, the numbers that were brought to us you know, per meal. That's kind of what we figured we could save that much money. Uh, part of the reason that this food service company can save so much money and then pass the savings on is they have a lot of jails. They have, you know, X amount of jails that they buy food from. So they buy all this in bulk and then they kind of pass them savings on down to us where we might buy 40, 40 hamburgers. Well, they're buying 400,000 hamburgers, for instance, and they're passing them on that cost down to, to everybody else. Thank you. My answer my question. That's kind of, I mean, the, the, that's kind of one of the savings. Sometimes you can get with outsourcing, and similar to the men care when we when we did the uh, with the jail medical service. So kind of a mm -hmm. similar thing. Sometimes it just works out really well to do it that way. Yeah, they can spread that co cost across the board when they have many like that. So. All right. Any other questions for Brad? Otherwise, we'll move on to item number eight, action to approve a video system upgrade in the detention center. Would you like to explain that, explain that Brad? Yeah, actually I got Matt, uh, our chief corrections okay. officer here as well. Um, just kind of touch base on this a little bit here. We uh, currently have six DVRs downstairs in our um, server room, uh, which runs all the cameras in the detention center. Um, there's different makes and models. Some of them are six, seven years old. Um, we're looking to upgrade to do one server to manage all of our, all of our cameras. Uh, we're going to upgrade all the wiring throughout the facility. There's, we have a lot of issues with some of the wiring that's coming and going from the jail here, or we have to call somebody in to run a new wire. Uh, some of these wires, they have um, things called balance on them that are changing cable to to digital and back and forth. Uh, so the, the process here, we would run new wires. So we're looking for a two phase, uh, two year project here. First year here, we're looking to do a new server, which running these new wires up to all these cameras and doing some switches upstairs in the control room or somewhere in the facility here. Uh, next year, we're looking to upgrade the cameras themselves. We have cameras that are still black and white. So from back in probably the eighties maybe, when they were installed. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the gist of the, the program kind of what we're looking at here. Does sound correct, Matt? Yep. All you right. Can see by the Good. list there, um, phase one, like I say, what we're looking to do this year is $31,000, $31,210. We did get a couple quotes and they're both similar. Um, we decided to go with this company. They've been reputable and good to work with in the past. And um, like say, plan on just upgrading the first phase here, get the, rid of them old DVRs so they don't crash, have everything on one software, um, easier to manage. It, yeah, it is a budgeted item for this year. Uh, it was in our budget for this year. So. 
And one of the things we talked about, excuse me, Madam Chair, can I ask yes. you, just mention something. I, I think if I'm remembering our, our discussion, um, if we ever did build a new building, this we could still use this equipment, correct? Yeah, you should be able to take the server, you know, it's computer equipment, like say it's something that still have to be upgraded every X amount of years. Um, but yeah, this is something that I would I would think you'd be able to take the server and these cameras and some of this stuff and move them to anywhere. It'll be a little bit of labor involved, but mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I, I make a motion to approve this purchase. All right, we have a motion by Gable. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah, I just have a question. I see we've got a little over five thousand dollars in licensing licenses. Uh, the software licensing. Yeah, Millstone Professional Base or Plus Base license. Could you explain that, please? Well, that's what all the that's what the cameras are going to run on. That's what allows us to be able to record and save and up and pull up these cameras again and um, be a part of that. They say it's a one-time fee. If you want, you can update it in the future. But they say that it's a one-time fee if you pay that to have that licensing for this software. Um, it's good. They say you can upgrade it in the future if you'd like so much per camera. Um, but our goal milestone is, is the name of the software, Brad. Yep. Yeah, that is correct. Milestone. So it's 389 per camera or three this is for different phases or are these all included in this this this, this, this is just the to get the project up and going and to cover all of our cameras that we currently have okay thank you any other questions are we ready to vote uh all in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 opposed Hearing on that motion carries. All right, item number nine, action to accept the resignation of Sheriff Sergeant Mike Gubka. We all received the letter. I'll make a motion Someone to, to accept, a motion. accept the resignation. Motion second. by Gable, second by Waterman. Any discussion? I guess the only thing I would say is to thank Mike for his service of the years that he was here. I'm sorry to see him leave and wish him well in his future. I too would like to thank Mike for his service to the county. Thank you, Mike. All right. Any other? I agree. Matt? All in I favor agree. say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries as well. Item number 10 action to hire a deputy sheriff to fill a vacancy. Brad still on, I guess. Yep. Still here. Okay. I Looking to just fill the vacancy that we just had there. So the budgeted item, it's just replacing. Okay. Replacing mine. Um, you're going to advertise. Is that the process that you're going to do or? Yep. Okay. Yep. Plan on advertising. And... Okay. All right. So we need a motion then for to allow the sheriff to so advertise. Moved. Motion by Gable. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Well, I have a question there, um, Brad. You know, here a while back, we put in for a, a grant, you know, to bring aboard um, another uh, deputy or another law enforcement person. Mm -hmm. um, yep. uh, have you heard anything in reference to that uh, possibility of uh, receiving that grant? And, and, and let's, let's just, Go to the finish here. I, I'm wondering is that if we would follow through with that and bring an individual in on that grant, would we need to hire another one now? Then it looks to me like then we'd have, you know, um, uh, you know, a, a spot for that person if if we would just hold off on hiring one at this time. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, most of uh, first of all, yes. That that grant. I got an email a couple weeks ago. And it looks like we have been approved for that grant. Um, I haven't had a chance to dig into it to see what the how we accept it and go through all that. Um, I figured we would discuss that with you guys here sometime. Um, but the question I think what you're kind of going to here is oftentimes on grants, you can't supplant another full-time person with that. 
grant. It would have to be in, in addition to what you currently have. Does that kind of answer your question, Myron? Yeah, that answers it. And then that's a three-year grant that they cover the costs of the salary. With the county taking the fourth year, and then after that, it could be, you know, it would be under the understanding of that officer whether or not the county wants to keep that person on, or like, he'd be up front with that officer. But that's that's actually not what I'm looking for today. I'm just looking forward to filling um, the vacancy that we already have. Yeah. 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 Uh, question: When you you use the word oftentimes, um, is that holding true in this particular grant, or is it not that we're uh, that we can't replace use that grant to replace this individual? I would say it's probably not. Um, without digging into the the, uh, the the digging in there a little bit, um, most all federal grants that we have, they always say that you cannot use them for any budgeted items that are already currently budgeted. So like say, if you plan on um, uh, like a phone system and you got a grant for that, but you already had it budgeted and you're, you're, you're not supposed to do that. It's so. Yeah. All right. Yes, and it's the same exact same thing with this federal grant as well. It's not for um, replacing or somebody that you currently have on staff. It's for adding a new addition. Brad, that was a COPS grant, correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. So in, in any, any event, other? if I could just comment, yes. um, Mentor. So in, in any event, the, the grant, the money from the grant is not here yet. It's mm -hmm. just, he just knows of its approval. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. we, we haven't have accepted it. And we, I figured we'd bring that to the board approval here sometime, so. Yeah, that has to come before the board to approve the grant and then go through the process. So, all right, um, are we ready to vote? Have we had a second? Yep. Brenda seconded okay. the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that motion carries. All right, Brad, I think we have all of your business taken care of today. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thank and you. And then if you would uh, just email those um, charts to all of the I, commissioners. I, either one of us can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lee well, has it. Somebody. So then the rest of the commissioners guess, can have that as well. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Um, goodbye. Is Luke. Luke is, looks like Luke joined us. So for item number 11, action to approve a plat resolution of the Boydstrom edition in Sheridan Township. Sure. I will take off if, if you're okay with that. Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, we have the plat of uh, Boydston Edition in the north half of the southeast quarter, section 30 in Sheridan Township. This is straight south of Watertown. Um, I guess, what would that be from 212? That looks like about four miles straight south of Watertown, uh, nearly on the edge of the county. The What we have here is, it was an interesting uh, use of the uh, farmstead exemption, uh, this property. Ultimately, what happened is it was granted a farmstead exemption. The uh, County Board of Adjustment reviewed the uh, comprehensive land use plan and zoning ordinance and determined that if two willing parties enter into um, an application for an existing farmstead, provided they're in the same section and not jumping over a road, and their properties touch, the farmstead exemption can be transferred between them. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, parcel, um, what, parcel two on that map was transferred uh, without the knowledge of the previous owner realizing that they would be losing their building right. Uh, and it was sold off to the, um, the farmer on the west side there. And the farmer on the west, west side realized they just wanted the farmland. They didn't really care about the ability to build there. So they transferred that farmstead on the west side over to that house. So a lot of terminology here, but the bottom line is uh, the Board of Adjustment approved the variance to allow this building site here. A letter of assurance has transferred that building right. And the last condition was to plat this and the Planning Commission recommended approval. All right. Moved to approve. Second by Johnson, second by... You guys flip a coin. Um, I guess I would just add to it. This is one of those unique situations where it's good that that um, our ag and people out in ag work together 
uh, because this was a non-conforming lot. So if an act of God would have came and wiped out their house, they would have not been able to replace it. So this is the kind of thing that we appreciate and really hope that happens in the future to work together and um, make these lots whole. So that was a good partnership. That's all I'm gonna say. So uh, we're ready to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries also. All right, thank you, Luke. I don't know thank if you, you have anything else. Yep, have a great day. Thanks, Luke. Thank Thanks. Thank you, Luke. Um, item number 12, action to adopt a discretionary formula for reduced taxation of new structures and additions. And that would be Shauna. Would you like to come up and give an explanation? Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Shauna. Shauna. Um, we talked about this a couple weeks ago and I dropped off this morning a little um, sheet that we'd actually gotten from the Department of Revenue that kind of explains um, the repealing of statutes and why we have to um, basically just redo our discretionary formula right now. Um, nothing is changing in the actual formula. It's basically, we are just putting in the new South Dakota codified law numbers um, and getting rid of the numbers that of the laws that have been repealed. We're still gonna have a 0% for five years. Um, and then we, the only thing that basically changed on this is, is instead of just having the actual law numbers, we called out the different property types um, and the Department of Revenue had actually sent out a format for us. And so hopefully they wanted to kind of get all the counties in South Dakota on the same format basically, but it basically is all doing is changing the correct, changing the, law numbers to the correct law numbers now that some laws have been reviewed. Great, I'll make a motion to approve. Second motion by Van Dusen, second by Gable. And this is something that we needed to do or we would have not been able to. Correct, we would no longer as of July 1st have a discretionary formula for any properties that are being built right now. And I'm glad that they are doing this. It cleans up that statute quite mm -hmm. a bit. So thank you. Makes it more specific now. Yes. All right, any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries. Thank you. Thanks, Shauna. Thank you, Shauna. All right, we will move on to item number 13, action to adopt the resolution regarding the treasurer's administrative fees. And Carol, if you'd come up with an explanation, please. Hi, Carol. Hi. Um, this is actually the result of a, a resolution that our uh, association had put forward last um, legislative session. Um, Pennington County was the main sponsor of it. Basically what it is is um, when you're doing a lot of out of state title transfers for people, like they go south, buy a vehicle when they're um, in Arizona or California, um, it takes a lot more than when somebody walks in with their paperwork. Um, so instead of having, you know, three or four emails back and forth with the dealership and the the customer um, and then have your fee be either a dollar because we mail out a registration or $5 because we mail out a plate. It's actually trying to match up the expense with the time involved. So um, they presented it to the legislature, it was passed. The fee is $25, which um, compared to other fees, when you look at the what the dealerships charge at the state is nothing, but um, in order to adopt it, the board has to approve the addition of that fee. So I'm just presenting it to you for your right. choice. I'll make a motion to approve this. Okay. Second. Motion by Gable, second by Waterman. So just to clarify what we're talking about, it's just when they have to do it all by mail. It's strictly by mail. It does not include military. I'm, it's, okay. it's strictly something that has more costs involved to it. It's not. It's not for every service right. that you do. It's not for is, every service we do. It's not for dealerships in South mm -hmm. Dakota that might mail our stuff. I'm, I'm curious about this, Carol, just a quick question. You said it does not include military. Is that, is that outlined in the statute that's it's listed statute, here? Yes. Okay. Uh, 32318. I, I have a... Uh, and I was going to present the statute, but it's not codified yet. It's okay. still on the website. Okay. In July, I'll bring it to you. All right. I have an email from our uh, welfare director weighing in on this topic. And, uh, and uh, the bottom line is, is she's not in favor, but and she 
think that it's imposing an unfair tax or a fee on some of the people that actually can afford it. And uh, so that the very minimal, what she would accept is wavering this expense for individuals who receive federal assistance, such as low income housing, SNAP, energy assistance, Medicaid, Medicare, that is unfair to the poor and uh, should not be subject to these expenses. And uh, that was uh, an email that I received from Sarah. And uh, of course her concern is that some of these people wouldn't be able to afford the, the additional $25. Is that what you said it was? Yeah. I don't know how you could sort these out. Yes, you can sort out the military, but it'd be hard to sort out these other ones, I'm sure. Right. I'm wondering if she was confused thinking that this was going to happen in office, that it's just for the people that's through the mail and right. in those sort of extreme circumstances that take more. Right. It's just, it's just to um, have the, the expense involved mm -hmm. be covered more, mm -hmm. you know. That, that's outlined pretty well in the last paragraph there. It's mm -hmm. received and processed entirely by mail. Right. Yeah. So, so the, those folks and We get paperwork from an out-of-state dealer, say somebody buys a vehicle in Omaha. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and Woodhouse sends us all the paperwork, but the customer comes in, they mm -hmm. don't get paid. They don't pay the $25 fee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's strictly the ones that are yeah, yeah, out-of-state. Entirely by mail. Yeah. yeah, right. This isn't a fair question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. All sure. right. How many you get a year? Um, 100, 200, 500? We don't get, well. I know there are right. some counties that get a lot. Right. And Pen like I said, Pennington is the one that sponsored it. Uh -huh. And they get a ton. Yeah. Um, we get a few during the winter months when people are in Arizona, California, Florida, sure. when they're down south. But we don't get that many where the customer does not come in ultimately. I mean, we might get paperwork from out of state, uh -huh. but the customer will come in because sure. they need to sign something or whatever. So yeah. it's just the ones that are more involved. So if you buy something from the aforementioned place mm -hmm. and I'll just use myself as an example. Yep. And when I bring it in, charge right if you want to send it out to my place it's 25 dollars right okay yeah so thank any you any other discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed that motion carries thanks okay. carol thank you thanks carol all right item number 14 action to approve an agreement for the willow creek stabilization project and rick if you'd want to give us a little explanation this is the bank stabilization that uh, was budgeted to uh, fix the, the bank on the Willow Creek that comes up into the right of way along our road. Mm -hmm. So it's it's all been bid. It's just now this is the final agreement to get mm -hmm. things rolling. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. McGable, second by Van Diesen. Any other discussion? This is the one that you, we've been talking about for quite some time. Yes. It's quite a process to finally be able to get to it. So. Yeah, bottom line is $78,887.60, right? Correct. It's an expensive project. But it has to be done. Well, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not. I don't have a choice. Did you uh, ever follow up? Is there any FEMA possibility? Mm -hmm. No. That me. wasn't on this one. That was something out west that we had did last year. But even that probably wouldn't qualify. All right. Okay. You ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. We'll move on to item number 15 discussion possible action to approve the purchase of a side dump trailer. That would also be yours, Rick, if you'd want to do an explanation on that. Okay. Um, I did a little calling around and uh, I received uh, one quote from uh, Butler Machine on a uh, Trail King side dump that was bid off source well. And that was in the amount of $49,883.56. And then uh, I got another quote from uh, TransSource in Aberdeen. And theirs was on a jet trailer and that was 56,000. And then, uh, Charlie's been checking around and uh, there's one sitting out for uh, 
Peterson uh, Motors on the west side of town. It's uh, uh, a Demco trailer. Um, the price on that would be 49.1, but there's an issue with the back axle, the way it sits right now. It's not what uh, the other trailers were. They were tandem axles in the back. This is a single axle. They would prefer the tandem in the back. It's a little more stability. If you have a flat tire, you can usually limp it to town with a single tire. If you're loaded, you got to bring a tire to it. So basically the two of the one we looked in, Rick and I talked about this on multiple times. Uh, basically the, the two trailers come in about $100 apart. <coughs> Um, about a hundred dollars apart. We were talking, we did a lot of extensive research and Cindy was involved with this and Carol was involved with this with the federal excise tax. Uh, we are federal excise tax exempt. And so that yeah. knocks it down quite a bit. The microphone. Um, on, so. All right, actually. Yeah, that with the federal excise tax that drops his price down to 49.1, but like I said, there's still tires and stuff that are not on the trailer currently. So, so if you would take, if we would add, go ahead. Well, the, to add the- Speak into the mic. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Sorry about you that. You might introduce you might yourself. You mention your name and- My name is Cougar Griffin and I'm with Peter Smolders. Yep. Uh, the Demco trailer that we have sitting on the lot, it, it was ordered with single rears, but it is set up to take duels. Now, rough price to get an exact, I would have to call the tire shop. But usually from our experience, about $600 to add that. Now talking with management, we'd be willing to put those tires on if that's what was required of no charge. But we would eat that, I guess. You'd eat the $600? Yeah, we'd put the tires on it. Okay. That'd be no charge to you guys. So for 49 one, those tires would be on there. Yep, it would be dueled up on all three axles then. Mm -hmm. Good. Can I ask a yeah, um, we do probably we, should do we, have a motion on the floor, motion and yeah, second for discussion. I would, I would I, I, it sounds like something we should postpone a week if if we could. So I'd make a motion to postpone it until the next meet. Well, it'd be two weeks the next meeting if that's not a are we needing okay. this like ASAP though, or is this something we can postpone or? We can postpone it forever. You know, it's one of those deals. I, I would like to get one, but. Well, hold on well, how just long a second. Is your, we, how long is this good for? Can we can we make a motion for the purpose of discussion? Yeah, I think that's a Okay, well, for, just okay. Get I'll, I'll, so I'll motion. make the motion for the purposes of discussion. I'll second the motion. Okay. okay. Now so, yeah. <clears throat> then we can always decide if we're gonna postpone. Oh, um, so. Yeah, I can I guess my, my question is I kind of don't want to do this on the fly if we've got these I'd like to sit down and look at the different factors. I mean, I don't know what's involved with adding a, an axle yeah, and tire. I don't know what's that sounds like a you know, that's kind of one of those deals that you know yeah you've got a quote and a price and yeah, you, you add a little bit to make it sweet the deal. So so I think one thing that would be beneficial for us as a commission is to have a side by side quote with Kat. And what they have given us from you, from Demco, so that we can look at the differences and we can speak about the differences and what's going to work for for your department. And we want to get you what you want and what you need. So, uh, and yet on so, the other hand, and I right. totally agree with you, but uh, here's an opportunity. Well, you got a price, basically. We have a we have a trailer sitting here in town, and it's we'd be buying locally. Mm -hmm. And we are always trying to keep our business locally, and this would be an opportunity to do that now. I don't know if there's that much difference between Trail King and Demco. And see, this this is a new trailer. Well, not a new trailer. It's better way back up. Demco bought out Circle R. Yeah. And uh -huh. yesterday, I put out an email to every uh, superintendent in the state, asked them if they could give me any, any information. I didn't get one response. I asked a couple contractors, does anybody have one? Not locally here, no. See, nobody has one, so I really don't want. I, I no offense, but I don't. I don't want to be the first one to have one that's 
may not be what we need. Uh -huh. So, but, but you do have Peterson Motors that'll service it and take care of it. And if I there's just, issues, you know, obviously we'll take care of any warranty issues right here. Uh, sure. And well, serviceability here. Uh -huh. So it, it sounds like I mean I, I kind of agree with what uh, what Commissioner Van Dusen said. I mean we, we kind of need that list of specifications just side by side so we can just see. I, I, I'm all out. for buying local. You guys know that. I always support if we can buy it local, then that's great. But but I want to make sure that what we're getting is is apples to apples in comparison. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't want Rick to I don't want to spend you know forty nine thousand or fifty thousand dollars and find out that that doesn't have something that this one had that he needs. Yeah. You know, because then it's too late. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mean any offense. We, we got a spec sheet from from these guys. Yep, yeah. and we did not get a spec sheet from. It should be an easy thing for you to yeah. do, right? Yeah. So and actually, I printed off. I mean, it doesn't have maybe exactly what's on there, but I did mm -hmm. print off one that has. I mean, I also the like very much components that are highlighted. Right. I like very much the idea of doing locally, and that's why I looked into this one. Uh, more basically the difference between the two is one has a little bit, bit a different shape of a belly in it than the other one so are they both 42 footers yes both 42 footers yeah so uh, in fairness then maybe we get a spec sheet get it to you you can do the comparison and see if you're comfortable with some of this and then bring it back again. you know I, yeah i like i said i it's probably a good trailer it's just we don't we don't have anything to go no. don't even have anybody to talk to mm -hmm. so like you know, you, yeah if you sold these to other people i mean can you get some contacts in for rick to be able to and see like the demo line for us is a fairly good line that we've worked with them before um, the other trailer that we don't have on hand it is going to be here the week of july 6th this this trailer and i've got a little brochure on it comes out of canada a midland now, Midland was a quite a few years back, big in the States. They pulled back to focus on Canadian market, from what I understand, and now they're re-entering the States again. Uh -huh. And that has always been a, a very good name. People have had them. And, but that's well, not the one that we're talking about now. Yeah, I mean, we, we, can, we have the option for either, and the price difference between the two is about $200. That would be $200 more? That would be two hundred dollars less. The Canadian, the Midland, and the specs are very similar. Maybe we should take yeah. a look at that one too. Yeah, and I can spec both of them for mm -hmm. you. And get them to Rick, and then give him a chance to look them over. And so, do we need a substitute motion then? So I'll make a substitute motion to to uh, postpone till the next meeting. Which would be July July seventh. So. In the meantime, if we can get those specs to Rick, and we can compare them. And just maybe just second. Second. What's in a second? Right. Yeah, that he was Good sitting job. there. <laughs> All right. All in favor uh, to postpone, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Aye. We will move this to the July seventh meeting. Get the information to Rick so he has a chance to. Look, and if you have some contacts for him that he can at least call some people, it'd be beneficial. If you uh, if you get the stuff together, you certainly are welcome to come back and and uh, support your information. Okay. All right. Because you'd probably be looking at three different trailers at that time. Yeah. Two for sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah and it's, those are the two that we carry. Yeah. So, okay. Very good. Uh, Thank just, you. Just just a little side note. We did. Uh, Rick looked around a little bit. I looked around a little, little bit, and uh, with the use that these trailers got, a used one is really not something we want. Mm -hmm. There's 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 too much room for a possible. But these are both bench. new. Those are all brand yeah, new. Yeah. Well, hopefully now that one from Butler doesn't sell in the meantime. Okay, um, we'll move on then to item number 16, no Independence Day office closures. Uh, per policy, previously adopted policy, um, when a holiday falls on a Saturday or Sunday, the county observes the holiday 
on Friday, if it's actually on Saturday or on Monday, if it's actually on Sunday. So therefore we will be closed um, Friday, July 3rd for the Independence Day holiday. No action is taken because it's already been adopted uh, per policy. Okay. All right, so we'll get that out to the media so they know that the courthouse will be closed that day. Oh, okay, because you're normally closed on Friday, so, okay. All right. <clears throat> Item number 17, discussion, possible action on COVID-19 practices and procedures. I guess this would probably be the time and place. Um, we have, you know, we approved that waiver and we're out at Memorial Park and for one at the extension complex. Um, I have had some correspondence with some individuals who would like to utilize the extension, but um, the waiver that we have in place is very restrictive. Therefore, they have contacted their carriers and said that, you know, they would not be able to rent the facility because they weren't comfortable signing the waiver. So I'm just asking the rest of you, I've been in contact um, and I've, I've called other counties to see if they adopted it and I haven't found one yet. I'm waiting for Mitchell because um, they have a light facility. Some of the other ones like Brown County has a racetrack and they don't have it. Minnehaha County doesn't have it. Um, so anyway, um, I just want to have you guys weigh in and see if we keep that in place, it might really limit what and who will be able to utilize that facility. Uh, that waiver was a recommendation. It's not a requirement by SDML. Um, I'm gonna find this information. So, so is the waiver the right term, Madam Chair? Is it? Is it it's uh, a facility agreement. So yeah, but facility it's kind use of a agreement that has all, yeah, the, yeah. all the, you know. The waiver and, is a recommendation, but they didn't want to sign it, anyway. Well, it's a, it's a facility agreement. And so they're, they're it, waiving their rights to, uh, yeah, to, so that they're going to take on the responsibility, you know, if somebody thinks they contacted COVID at their event or whatever, that we would not be held responsible for that. But say for an auction sale, like um, it says that they need to, you know, really for the cleanliness part of it, and clean behind people. So if you're gonna have an auction, you got people picking stuff up and setting stuff down and how, what would really be um, considered proper cleaning measures for that sort of a, an event, so. If you had an auction, you can possibly no, clean it's, everything. It's, that it's an unreasonable possibly. sort of thing. And you're not gonna keep people separated. Okay. Well, and we can put signs up. I mean, and still say adhere to social distancing. They can put sanitation stations out to for people, you know, yeah, to right. utilize. But so basically, if we have this waiver in place, I think we're going to limit who would be able to adhere to it and so, be able to rent the facility. So, so we'd want to rescind our previous action. I'm just asking if that's something okay. you guys are trying to find. Cindy gave me. Um, a sheet this morning that said our revenue. Well, I'm trying to find uh, it. It's in that stack, like you see it falls okay. down the bottom there. All right. Are you going to limit the number of people oh, that are going to attend the auction too then? Well, that's something I guess, you know, with social distancing. But then you're restricting commerce. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it, I think it goes that. back to personal responsibility too, guys. Right. I mean, I think we've, I think we've, we've gotten to that point now where people know the risks. It's an assumed risk if you go to an auction and you're within six feet of each other that there is a likelihood or a possibility that you could contract COVID-19. I mean, I, I, we could, you know, like I said, we could legislate this this to death if we wanted to, well, but we can make I think a we thick book out of it, like I've said before. I think it's time to 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 when lift you these get limits. People gathered and, together generally. Hold on, just a second, Charles. Well, I'm not finished. I, I think if we if we post the signs and we put the the sanitation stations around. Um, and I can read a sign that Minnehaha County put up and we could do this as well out at our facility that says the health and safety of our guest participants and community is our priority and inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 exists in any public place and any interaction with the general public poses an elevated risk of being exposed to COVID-19 by visiting 
and they list their facility, you voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19, and we cannot guarantee that you will not be exposed during your visit. There you go. So I think if we get a sign like that and put it up out there, I just hate to limit, because uh, it is very restrictive. And I guess, so our revenue last year was 24,808. And the one, the, the person who contacted me and that's sort of events that they have was almost $7,000 of that 24. Well, so I, I guess I would make, so I'd make a motion to rescind our previous action to um, require the signing of actually uh, the motion was um to require COVID 19 waivers right yeah. i was just going to say to rescind that motion okay. that we're, we're, by which uh, we required in, okay to, to rescind our june 4th action which required the signing of COVID 19 specific waivers facility use waivers does that so, yep sound what well about memorial yep. park because we have them out there too yes but just said county facilities, wide. I just said facility, wide. Okay. Said facilities so just county we send facility. them off yeah. okay that's what we're going to do then. And I'll do I have a second for that? Second by Van Dazen. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Do all in favor? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. Further discussion. Do, do we need to put in there that this is just to rescind that motion, but do we need to put in there to establish signage? Um, we could, I, I would, I think that was something like a good sign too. Yeah. And, to, yeah. and so, so that's that covered that under be, something that we previously Why don't we do that as a separate done? motion? Okay. That's, that's but but is it covered under something we've previously done when we reopened this building? Because we, when we, we reopened our okay. facility, it's probably already it covered under it's that. It's kind of phase, kind of part of phase two when right. we just said signage. signage. Just okay. said signage. So okay. let's just, so get, it, it we'll just, under yeah. Do we need to make updated signings? Well, I think we'll maybe get this one to put out there and maybe out of, the park, you know, those two facilities. I mean, and then, yeah, we'll need to do something with social distancing and then. I like the verbiage of that. Yeah. I think we just changed this, it from the high. This yeah. sign rather than what we've got yeah. out there now then. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> pretty simple. <laughs> Where are you talking, what were you talking Like out of Memorial Park. It will, this but will be an additional, I don't know, yeah. But it, we'll, we'll work on we'll that. Just coordinate with Steve. Yeah, we'll coordinate it with Steve and get, this is a nice sign I thought too, it kind of says, you know, says what we, what we need to say. I'll just um, note in the minutes that additional signage yeah. will be prepared for these facilities, for these okay. uses. Yeah. All right. Yeah, at those two places that we had the waivers in place, we'll remove them and, and put signage up. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries also. Um, how about item number 18, action to approve claims for payment? Um, we have our claims that we normally pay at this time of the month to avoid finance charges on our uh, credit cards. And we also have our 911 payment to the city of Watertown for April 911 surcharge collections. The amount paid to the county by the state is $22,668.41. And that amount per agreement goes to the city of Watertown. Uh, we have two vouchers here because we had um, an error when we paid bills on June um, 9th. Uh, we had we had two vendors whose uh, invoices are very similar, and one vendor's invoice got attached to the other vendor's uh, voucher. So we need to approve claims to, and we've actually already approved these claims. This is just the corrective measure. Uh, print them now for three hundred and three dollars, and then we had a Jurgens printing invoice that got attached to the print them now uh, building, so we had to split that out. And that amount was $410. And that was for my COVID-19 election signage that I had made. Then we have our Visa Relia Bank credit cards. The first one is for $301.67. That is for the Sheriff's Office for supplies and travel costs. The second one is the Emergency Management Relia Bank Visa. And that is for $14.98 for supplies. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Van Dusen, second by Gable. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, that motion carries. All right, item number 19, action to approve automatic budget supplements. I have nothing for 19, 20, or tw Well, we probably well, we do have, have something 20. for 20. Right. Right. Okay, so um, for item number 20, do you want to do the explanation, Cindy? Or um, last week it? when I was preparing the minutes, um, I discovered that when we approved personnel changes, um, 
and this was in your packet. Originally, I didn't think it was, but it was in your packet. The, uh, the personnel changed for the shop foreman mechanic position. I did not notice that um, the highway superintendent had put the effective date as January 1st, 2020. So that led to some discussions on how we could award a salary January 1st when we didn't have a job description until June 16th. So I need direction from the board on whether or not to make that effective date June the 16th or leave it as January 1. So we would need a motion on that. Could we have Terry come up? Sure. Terry, you want to come and give us a little guidance on this, please? You're not done yet, mister. <laughs> yeah. I can't let you go without that. squeeze that. every nickel out of it. You got to have your one last hurrah. Here. Okay. Uh, sure, and talk into the mic then, no. so everybody gets to hear you. Okay. There you go. <laughs> uh, I talked with Commissioner Waterman about this issue yesterday, and I called Rick out of the highway and talked to him about it. Um, the position did not exist prior to the adoption of the uh, job description. Also, uh, the employee did not assume those duties January 1st. And so my opinion, and I expressed it to both Mr. Waterman and Rick was that uh, there's no justification for retroactive pay. I think I weighed in, uh, Cindy, that I suggested June 16th as the date. Mm -hmm. Is that a motion then? It's a motion. I, that's a motion, yes. Motion by Johnson, second by Vander. Could you repeat that motion, Mr. Johnson? Gable, Gable, Gable okay. got it. Gable, that's the effective date is June 16th. Oh. No, I, didn't say oh, guys. I, I heard Gable. Yeah, I thought it was Lee, but then he, <laughs> you were looking like, okay. All right. Any other That's discussion on this? All right. It will be June 16th. That will be the effective date then. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. All right. We have one more little thing for you, Terry. I, while you are front end center, you would. Terry, this is a. Um, a resolution 2020-18 to recognize you and your service to Connington County over the years. Um, it says, whereas Terry Satterley has been the human resources specialist and labor contract negotiator for Connington County, and whereas Terry Satterley has provided excellent service on behalf of the citizens of Connington County, and Whereas Terry Satterley has worked to advise the Coddington County Commissioners with great insight and expertise. And whereas Terry Satterley has earned the respect of all those who have worked with him during his tenure as a Coddington County Human Resource Specialist. And whereas Terry Satterley is leaving his service with Coddington County on July 1st, 2020. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners expresses in deep appreciation to Terry Satterley for his superb service to the citizens of Coddington County. We appreciate your service and dedication. Upon vote of the board, this resolution was adopted this 23rd day of June, 2020. So, signed by County Commission. I'll make a motion Sorry. to approve resolution. I'll second that. Got a motion and a second. All right, we have a motion by Gable, second by Johnson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that motion carries. Thank you for your service. And it was just because he's a good guy. <laughs> we got to sign, sign it. Much further over. We have enjoyed <laughs> you so greatly, Terry. Well, I just want to say a couple things. I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed working with not only the county employees, but the county commissions over the years. It's uh, been very rewarding for me. And uh, as I went through some difficult personal issues, this kind of became my family in town here to help me through those. And I'll never forget the kindness shown to, to me and my family by the commission and the employees. And uh, like I say, it, everything good thing must come to an end, but uh, that That's certainly quite an adventure some for us memories. too. Uh -huh. I said it was quite an adventure for us too. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in touch. Yeah, Terry, um, you have really given your life to public service, and um, I thank you for that. Um, from a career, outstanding, stellar career in law enforcement in Sioux Falls, and.
to here in Coddington County where you ended up. You retired and moved to Coddington County to, to probably work harder than you had to in Sioux Falls. But uh, <laughs> anyway, we, we appreciate your service and dedication to the county. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, we wish you a very happy and successful retirement and enjoy yourself and uh, just do what you've always wanted to do with nothing, right? Probably. Yeah. I found out I'm pretty good at doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the rubber side down, right? Yeah. yeah. A shiny side up. Yeah. Yep. Keep the shiny side up. So what's the plan now, Terry? Pardon? What's the plan now? Well, it's scheduled to close on the house Friday. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave for Arizona and uh, actually become an Arizona resident. You're going to ride your if bike. If I get back in. Yeah, I am. You're going to ride your bike now? No, I don't. <laughs> the bikes are down there. But... Oh, the bike is down there, yeah. Yeah. So, well, we'll save friends. Yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you very much. I really enjoyed the time. Truly. Touch base once in a while so we know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. change your phone number because yeah, then I have to call no. you. No. <laughs> I was just going to say, don't switch your cell number. Yeah. Yeah. Was it January of 2007? Is that right? Pardon? Is it January of 2007? Is that right? When you started, started union negotiations with us? Four five, I started doing the union. Okay. All right. I was just looking January, here. January. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You're then right. he tried to quit on us several times. <laughs> he tried several times to, find to quit. Out. <laughs> yeah. So like, we got we got donuts in honor yes. of your previous law enforcement career. Yeah. Oh, wow. and a cake. Really? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I have a big Troy, splash, so don't leave. Troy and I are the shortest time on here working with you, but uh, it's you've made my job as commissioner. A whole lot easier. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, Definitely. Yeah, yep. All of us. Yeah. Absolutely. He was Somebody always there if we called him. We always able to muddle through. <laughs> <laughs> right, wrong, or indifferent, Sarah, right? We get that. Uh, I always, I always appreciated the kiss method. Yeah. <laughs> and we all know what you, that you is. better translate that for the working screen here. So yeah, I don't know what keep he's it talking simple, about. Keep it simple, stupid. That's <laughs> All right. Thank All right. You. Thank, thank you, Terry. Thank you. So listen, don't go away. We're going to. This would be a good way to segue into an introduction, wouldn't it? Well, we can do so. that. I was going to hit that under old business. We got to, yeah. we need to talk. Okay. Yeah. Sure we still need to. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we will do that, though. Uh, item number 21 action to approve travel requests. Nothing today. Nothing. And public notices, a possible quorum of commissioners. I don't think we really have anything that we're, I guess I've been attending those meetings, but they've still all been virtual. Um, the, the, uh, ones? the board appointment meetings. So oh, yeah. I don't have anything to report this week, though, if anyone else does. We did have a planning and zoning meeting this week, yeah. and it was virtual. So yeah. I watched that one. It was, it was one where you had to come back three times. Yeah. 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 It kept yeah. dropping. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was on the freebie one, I guess, yeah. and that wasn't working. Yeah. All right. Old business. So, um, Lee, you want to? Yeah, just, just one. So on the, uh, as, as you all know, Last week we 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 accepted um, multi business solutions uh, proposal for um, uh, human resources and uh, labor negotiation services. So we Matthew Raymond is here with us to introduce herself. So um, just uh, um, want to introduce Natalie and maybe after maybe well or we can yeah come on up and yeah. just say hello. Have her come up. And then uh, one at one point we were working on the contract with. Um, Natalie and Megan and the state's attorney just to formalize um, the acceptance of the proposal. So the, the verbs are about done on that just for everybody's awareness. So since our next meeting is July the 7th, we would like multi-business to be able to start it, start working July the 1st. So if that hopefully that's okay with everybody, but just realize there's gonna be a little bit of a lag between the, between the two. So, um, but uh, Becky's looked at, the state's attorney's looked at the, the, the contract and I think we got it figured out. So between, I mean, that's, so anyway. What did you just say? The contract isn't <laughs> contract. quite ready yet, but it's very close. Well, it's very close. <laughs> it, be, it should be, shouldn't be any problem to be ready. Yeah. By uh, yeah. So, yeah. And okay. it's nothing out of the ordinary, just sort yeah. of some finer yeah. little details. Yeah. That's so, yeah. yeah. So Natalie, <laughs> would you please introduce yourself? Okay. Hello, everybody. Great to meet you. I'm Natalie Raymond. I am with Multi Business Solutions, as you know. We are based out of Fergus Falls, Minnesota, but I live in Wilmot, South Dakota with my husband and two children. And I'm very excited to work with you all and feel like I have big shoes to fill from Terry, but hopefully get a chance to talk to him a little bit more today. 
Okay. Right, good. Good. Hopefully yeah. you can stay for coffee and yeah. cake. And yes, that'd be great. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. What's your Thanks contact for information? Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say it. Oh, yeah. no, wait, we're not yeah. doing that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Write it on a piece of paper. I'll slide you some cards. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Welcome catch. aboard. Thank yes. you. Yeah, All right. Um, item number 24. Any new business? Anything for the open? I don't have a need for exec. Does anyone else? Move to adjourn. No, hold on. No, no, I think oh, we can do that. Wait. Okay. We'll that All right. Got sense. a motion by Johnson to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gable. All in favor say aye. 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 Host, we are adjourned. Whew, I got to go to that.